After a deadly attack on its border this summer, Turkey entered the fight against ISIL, launching airstrikes and allowing a U.S.-led coalition to use its airbase. But now Islamic State extremists may have brought terror to the capital, Ankara, in two suicide bomb blasts, killing nearly 100 people and wounding hundreds more. With the latest from Turkey, Mikhail Bardavid joins us now from Istanbul. And Mikhail, what is the security situation in Turkey like right now? Are you seeing security being tightened? Yes, certainly, Anand. We are seeing uh, more security measures being taken across the country. We're seeing more uh, police officers patrolling, especially in major cities. The interior minister has announced that uh, following Saturday's attack, they have learned a lot of lessons from that attack, and they have taken new security measures accordingly. However, whether or not these security measures will be efficient is a different question. So a lot of people don't feel very secure in Turkey at the moment. Meanwhile, the investigation is continuing, and the Turkish government has announced that they have suspended um, the... Ankara police, security and intelligence chiefs at the moment. And this is because there's a lot of criticism asking whether or not there was a security lapse and whether or not um, these three or one of these three uh, are to blame partly for this attack is still not clear. That is why they've been suspended. Well, one of the things that's happened is that we now have a lot of protests against the government after these bomb blasts. Some are blaming the president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, for this. Others saying that Turkey has not taken a firm stance against the radical group uh, ISIL. Uh, what is the security situation right now and, you know, what do we know about these protests? Yes, certainly. There's been a lot of criticism. They are blaming the government for not preventing from this attack to happen. Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu went on national television. He said they have a list of potential suicide bombers, but they're not able to arrest them because they have not carried out an attack yet. So this has caused a lot of reactions from the Turkish public. Uh, they are saying, of course, this is, this is kind of crazy in Turkey at the moment because um, in Turkey, you can be arrested for just insulting the Turkish president. But also, more importantly, hundreds of military officers had been arrested earlier in Turkey for allegedly plotting to overthrow the government. That is why uh, this statement has caused a lot of reaction from the Turkish public. We're seeing a lot of criticism on social media as well. For example, one tweet read, uh, if you see a suicide bombing on the street, suicide bomber on the street, call the police and tell them that someone is insulting the Turkish government and they will come right away. Okay, and it's all very complex because we know that the Turks have been going after the Kurdish Workers' Party, otherwise known as the PKK in northern Iraq and Syria. This is a separatist group, and the Turkish uh, campaign against them is part of its overall strategy to fight ISIL. Many Kurds, we know, also died in these attacks this weekend. How is that large Kurdish population in Turkey reacting to this? They are furious. We have been in Ankara. We have been talking to a lot of Kurdish people there, and they were blaming the government for this attack. Now, it's important to understand that following the Suraj attack that took place on July 20th, which killed 33 people, the Turkish government blamed that attack on Islamic State, on ISIL. However, following Suraj attack, the Turkish government launched a general war on terror, uh, but they, uh, they targeted PKK targets more often than they targeted Islamic State militants, which effectively also ended the peace process between the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, and the state. So a lot of Kurdish people are saying that Turkish government is to blame for the recent violence that has taken place between the PKK militants and the Turkish state recently. Now, all this coming at a very important time for Turkey. You've got parliamentary elections. They're coming up on November 1st. How is all this going to factor into those elections? Well, first of all, we're expecting a huge turnout. We're expecting a lot of people will go and vote during this election. However, we're not expecting a major shift in the result of this rerun election. Uh, we do not expect that the AKP, the Ruling Justice and Development Party, will be able to become a single party again. We're expecting that they will have to form a coalition again. But this will depend on whether or not the HDP, the Kurdish uh, Democratic People's Party, will be able to pass the 10% threshold like they did last time.